Okay, welcome to the show. Welcome to Nigerian Music History and Stories on this podcast, Music in My Ears. Like I keep on saying, Music in My Ears is about the history of Nigerian music as it went down in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. This is about the sixth episode of this show, and all along we've been doing the introductory part. But today, we are about opening the cookie jar into the contemporary music form that reigned in the 70s, the predominant contemporary music form of the 70s. I am talking about the Afro-funk music or funk rock music or psychedelic funk music of the 70s. By the way, my name is Joseph Asipo, the creator of this podcast. Now, without wasting much time, we're looking at the 70s. Principally, the music of the 70s in Nigeria was dominated by the big funk rock bands and some other big acts like Sonny Okusun, Tony Gray, Fela Kuti, Sir Victor Whitehall, and other bands that had other acts that had big band, big supporting bands. But we still had high life music around that time and some other ethnic kind of music. But for the contemporary, predominant contemporary music, we are talking about bands like the Funkies, Sweet Breeze, The Apostle, Rinkas Experience, The Wings of Abba, The Hikers, Strangers, The Doves, amongst others. They were basically based in the southeastern part of the country. Most of them stayed in Abba, the commercial city of the southeast, and others were in Calabar. Um, acts like Gerald Dupino was in Portacot, the Action Funk in Wari, uh, Vitamin Risk, Sonny Risky, and Vitamin Explosion Band in Uyo. These are the people, the bands that made up the predominant band that make up the um, Afro Funk era. We had some in Lagos. The, the Mono Mono, the St. Gregory School Boys Band, um, uh, um, what's the name again? They were very popular as a den. So uh, that's uh, talking about Ofege. Ofege reigned supreme in Lagos area along with Mono Mono and the rest. So these are the bands that made it happen as far as Afro funk music was concerned. So starting from this episode will be looking at afro funk then we'll go into the individual bands and try to review their acts their arts and what they were all about this is how we are going to go about it to really delve into what this uh, contemporary kind of music meant afro funk we'll be looking at it bit by bit you know and make the best out of it to educate ourselves. So by definition, we like to define Afro-funk or funk group rock music as a fusion of a West African rhythm with Western music form, principally funk music and rock music. We've mentioned the foreign, how foreign music dominated the Nigerian music scene in those eras in the 70s and the 80s. We have mentioned some of the popular bands, the American pop bands, the British band, the reggae bands that ruled our airwaves. It's equally important to remember that the 70s, in the 70s, we also had rock and roll music being enjoyed all over Nigeria. So that was another influence, probably uh, a source where Afro funk, or when you say funk rock, came about. Along with the rock and roll music, was the funk music. The 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 rock and roll music, the popular acts that we know in those days um, that were common. We're talking about the Rolling Stones, AC and DC band, Keys, Smokies, Queens, The Police, Rod Stewart, Aerosmith, and the Who. They were quite popular in Nigeria, even though uh, Nigerians tend to enjoy the soft rock, not so much of the 
the hard rock, the metallic kind of music. We were conversant with the Smokies, Police, Rod Stewart, kind of the the softer version of rock music. Then, equally popular was the funk music. We embraced a lot of the James Brown. It was a major exponent of folk, funk mo- movement. Roy S, BB and Q band, the back is one way, dance band, brass construction. Bobby Bird, Cameo, Rick James, they were some of the most popular funk artists that influenced or shaped uh, what um, later happened and became became Afro funk or funk rock, as some people tend to call it, or psychedelic funk. So that's how it went. That is, Afro funk is actually the fusion of this kind of music, and coming from a background in high life, bringing everything together to produce a new kind of sound. So basically, if you are t- you, you may not be able to get or uh, to listen to the 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 you won't be able to get what you will get hearing listening to let's say Ross Stewart or Red Hot Chili Pepper that is the core uh, rock band but you know in Nigeria we know how to adapt fuse things from other climbs and make it happen for us that is exactly what afro funk meant that's exactly how that music form came to be so that's the adaptation we are talking of and making it form our own west african music culture nigerian music culture so we let's look at a bit of the origin or who actually started where did it all start but before then we go back into the history you know music in my ears is all about marine history, sometimes we bring in the political narrative, the economic narratives to the music. Nigeria just came up from the civil war, a bloody civil war that we lost a lot of lives between uh, 30 months, in late 60s, very late 60s, 67, about to 69. So a lot of the young people, some of them, soldiers some of them educated people that now went to fight some of them were the 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 music departments of the army either in the nigerian army or the biafran army at the end of the civil war most of them came together to create music to form bands that would be able to entertain the people bring support to the people that had just been inflicted by heavy losses following the war, trying to revive, trying to bring hope to the people, especially people down in the southeast part of Nigeria that really brought the bronze of the civil war. So this, for this reason, the, the people, the populace really embraced this people as uh, these, these musicians as a means of hope, as a means of revival, as a means of trying to forget their losses, the people that died, their properties that were lost, as a means of getting hope to live life again. So that is a kind of perspective that we're looking at. So let's see how the earliest Act or how can we trace the source of Afro funk? You know, so in one of the articles on an online article, Ed Emeka Kiazo, which I'll quote him directly, tries to explain in quote that one of the first superstar, superstars of funk, not really Afro funk in Nigeria, was incidentally a non Nigerian by the name Geraldo Pino the son of a Sierra Leonean lawyer who settled in Nigeria. Gerapino took the country by storm in the mid-60s with his explosive live performances. Pino, Pino became the funk ambassador of Nigeria with time because one of the most, he was one of the most popular musicians in contemporary music scene. Gerapino too 
uh, end of quote then jarapino actually influenced a lot of nigerian artists including fela kuti and you know the man was based in portacot until he died in 2008 but he was he was, he was a colossus in terms of funk music and from my reckoning Gerald Pino would have been well influenced by late um, James Brown so he imbibed this funk kind of music and made it popular so alongside the popular acts from America the funk acts of, of America like you mentioned James Brown and the rest Gerald Pino was one of the people that um, brought to fore the local version of funk music in Nigeria so so coming back to the rock and roll part like I said you're not really you are not going to listen to the hard rock the the guitar splits and all that in our music but the fusion with the West African rhythm and bits of the rock and bits of the funk is the highlight of Afrofunk, the highlight of Afrofunk in Nigeria. Then again, when you're talking of funk music, we, even though we say that we imbibe it from Americans and the rest, but we know that originally the, the origin of funk itself is from Africa. The origin, because funk music is all about what our forefathers carried as slaves from Africa to America. So creating this fusion back into Afrofunk is rather a homecoming. A homecoming of funk music back to the roots. You know, what they took out as slaves to America, remodeled it over time, over the years, creating rhythms into what was funk came back to Africa to Nigeria in the in, 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 in the form of afro funk so that's another perspective that we share on music in my ears the historical perspective of music you know to really drive home the points so the generic source of afro funk is not in a doubt However, there are different versions of the real creative origin of the music form. One other source claims Tony Allen, for a last former drama, as being credited with the creation of Afro funk. I'll quote Wikipedia this time around. Post Fela, Allen developed a hybrid sound, deconstructing and fusing Afro beats with electronica, dub. R&B and rap. Allen refers to his synthesis as Afrofunk. End of quote. So in this, in this very quote now, in this very write-up now, the late Tony Allen is being tapped or being credited with creating Afrofunk, synthesizing different kinds of music. Afrobeat, electronica, dub, R&B, rap, into a fusion which he referred to as Afroform. But there are other sources, other contentions. You know, some other historians, histori- historians claim it could be, have been the hikers who started in, from Lagos in 1960s, moved to Portacot before the war, and again after during the war they ended up being part of the biafran war they were encapsulated into the biafran system some of them were part of the the biafran army so you can trace it back to a group like hikers you know from lagos back to portacot and being part of the war and playing around this uh, with the soldiers creating this kind of music so some other source credits the hikers with um, the origins of Afrofunk. And the Icas um, were 
made up of uh, Bob Miga, late Bob Miga, late Parfine, Emil Lawson, Jeff, Afam, and Felix Zimofia. They actually broke to national limelight as lead acts in the old Nigerian Broadcasting Commission TV show, Saturday Square. You know, so being on national TV, they kind of highlight um, Afro funk to the general viewership of the Nigerian people. So we also understand that. We also understand that the big funk rock bands were vital and the eastern part of the country fed Nigerian bone years with music that eliminated both the possibility of those years and the lingering renaissance spirits of war survivors. So I've mentioned this. That was a quote. I've mentioned this. Most of them came off the war to, to act as a source of succor to people that have been war beaten. Then we had this um, other band, the One Wall Band, and the Strangers. Those those band, the membership used to be together, but along the line, One Wall broke out from Strangers and move on to Worry, where the actions held forth. The action, the the actions were were Worry based. So One Wall later, after splitting with Strangers in a bar area they move on to team up with one uh, with the action then later came the form keys which equally became one of the most prominent bands of that era the form keys had some of the biggest names in the game and then they're talking of the late jack solo super producer super duper producer one of the best producers Nigerians has ever produced with credits of Felix Liberty, Gido B, SB Family, and the rest. Harry Mosco and Sonia Kwan. Harry Mosco is another big name, late Harry Mosco. Those were the people that formed the Funkies. So, those are one of the prominent, another prominent group that highlighted. Um, Afro funk music. Of course, we've mentioned Gerald Pino, their own soul brother, version of the American soul brother James Brown. We also had them, um, Fanders 15, IK Peters, Marshall Odero, that had this uh, Be My Own, a monster hit of those days. Then Sokyo Halle and the CJs. Sokyo Halle is very popular, it was very popular in this in the seventies, in the eighties, in Aba. Had his band, one of the exponents of funk music, popular song, uh, Dance On. I used to watch Sokyo Ale on uh, on television on NTV Aba, NT Aba those days. Then from Calabar area came the Doves. The Doves had this very memora- memorable single the Lord is my shepherd. Then they came out with the everything will be all right. Then in Aba again, like we mentioned, Aba seems to have been the headquarters of Afro funk music. Uh, the, the Apostle. The Apostle had worked in Arongua, Murphy Williams, Barista, Chike Fusion, Joel Mabdibike, Henry Standu and the rest the apostles were quite 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 popular but still talking about the trying to trace the conception of this psychedelic funk rock music one very prominent person came um, comes to mind we are talking of ginger baker ginger baker was a British drummer and founder of the group Cream in Nigeria between 1970 and 1976. Ginger Baker came over from Great Britain, set up residency in Lagos, set up band, we mentioned the Cream, later Salt, later BLO, all based in Lagos. 
Jida Baker is also credited with bringing into force Afro-form music. He came into Nigeria, set up a studio, stayed, worked with Fela Kuti, recorded music, you know, and one of the outputs or outcome of his activities is BLO or SALT as they were called before. BLO, by the way, in, in, we are talking of um, Lalo Ekins and the late um, Beckley Jones. Michael Dumotu, then later Lemmy Jackson, one of the biggest, biggest backup bands that were behind such big bands such as Ofege, such as uh, Larry Fedioroma, and uh, of course, Jim Jabeka was also a force behind Mono Mono, who had Johnny Hastrop in their lineup, then Mixed Grill with T Mark and BLO as I mentioned earlier. So he had a lot of influence creating bands, creating stars, creating acts, setting up studios, recording. You know, so Ginger Baker is also credited as a creative source of Afrofunk culture in Nigeria. So with this I think we've done justice taking a peep into the Afrofunk era. In the next episode, we'll be looking at the individual bands, trying to look at what they did, their recordings, their discography, trying to review, trying to find out where they are now, trying to see the membership of the band, and, you know, just wrap around the history of the most contemporary music, the reigning contemporary music of the 70s era, Afro-funk music. Thank you for listening. Until next episode, I remain your friend, Joseph Asiko. Thank you.